what's up everybody it's your favorite confused nerds favorite nerd and today we are looking at the manic cyclops i have no idea what this is joe kw dropped it off at my house because he just got it and said your viewership might appreciate this i'm guessing he's right i'll take his word for it i don't know no clue what this is and it comes with zero instructions zero <sighs> anyway we're gonna take a look at this guy we're gonna talk about the accessories we're gonna build it because it comes in two boxes this occupies one box everything else occupies the other box so we're gonna go through it step by step put it together talk about it and then have some final thoughts so with that being said let's get started with accessories all of them first and foremost thankfully he comes with a head so it's painted beautifully the same way that the rest of it is painted with this chrome metallic almost but it's it's like it's somewhere between chrome and metallic it lives between those two spaces blue and then we have some gray and silver accents along the way as well it plugs in here as you rotate it, it's just the helmet that rotates. So I'm guessing it rotates here on the ball peg as well. We'll take a look at that when we go through it. But that moves the eye, which is pretty cool. And then there's a hinge as well that allows him to look down. So I'm gonna hinge the neck piece forward to give myself a little space and then pop it on the ball peg. Also, thankfully, you get two arms, and we have all sorts of die cast pieces up in here, as well as paint applications and so on and so forth. We'll go over that mostly when we go through the articulation and such. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're good looking and they're heavy. And then they'll just attach right onto these pegs. Very Build-A-Figure-esque. And same for the other side tight fit too which hopefully will prevent it from falling out you get two shoulder pads you get a spiky one and this has a handle that i'm guessing he can hold as well as a weapon and then this piece also hinges and then you have this piece which is the peg that goes into the shoulder you have the chromed out missiles they will or whatever they are spikes this one rotates i'm guessing this one should but i'm certainly not going to force this thing and then you have the blue and gold deco that we'll kind of go over once we get it on there. This one is the same, except the spikes are they're closed off. They're not home today. So that's that one. And then this one just has the peg underneath. There's another peg in the disc hinge of this shoulder here. And you just sort that out, or another hole rather. And you just sort that out with this peg in the shoulder pad. And that fit makes me very nervous. And then the same for this side. Peg is, you know, and that's that. You get these two thruster things for his back. Uh, they articulate at different points, and even inside, you have some chrome accents, some translucent accents, and uh, these two pegs here. These will peg into his backside here, but it is a tight fit getting it in there. And that will get you him put together as his sort of base robotic form. You get a display base that's pretty nice. It has this, which I'm sure means something. And then it says, you know, this name, Maninic, Maninic <laughs> Cyclops. And then it has the little plate there at the bottom. I'm a big fan of the plate stuff. You get this arm, armature rather. And this reacts the same way as a lot of the ones that we've seen. You can extend, you can release and it has this armature here which then you can associate so we'll or adjust rather so you'll put this in here and then you'll put this in there and then you can use this to adjust which is like a little wheel and it locks in and then at the top of it you have this piece here which you can unlock and lock accordingly with this pin here and when you get it to where you want, you just slide it through and then you're locked in. And then it has a number of adapters. I'll show you what they do in a bit. But you can take this piece out. It has a tendency to kind of fall out anyway. And then slide this in and you want to move your jets out of the way. I wonder. There. And the bottom piece of the plastic braces against the bottom of the pelvis. And then you're, you're good to go. He comes with four lightsabers, two kind of straight out blades. They are decoed the same, flat black plastic with a pink translucent plastic blade. It is a bit of a softer plastic, so there is a little give there. You don't have to worry too much about breakage, but I wouldn't try to push it to its limits. 
And then two swooshing lightsabers with the kind of effect behind it, which, you know, I feel like is one of those things that is the, the attempt and the thought is better than the actual implication, but it is there if you so desire. And he'll hold that just fine with the tab and his palm inserting into the hilt of the lightsaber. He'll hold the swooshing one the same way, but be aware it doesn't always hold as nicely as you'd like it to. The nice thing is, though, there's a tab or slot rather on both sides of the hilt so you can kind of, you know, adjust it as need be in order to get to the desired effect or swing angle. He also comes with two of these shotguns. Nice tampo paint, nice gray paint added to the black plastic. You can rack them. The problem is, is that it's too loose. So if you have it up, it's just going to fall down. It's not like there's no tension on it really. And then you can adjust the handle. And as the handle comes down, this piston moves in and out, which is a pretty nice touch. I must say. And he will hold that just fine. However, this section is kind of long, so sometimes it's hard to kind of get it as far across his chest and stuff as you'd want. But but that's part of the issue with this guy is that some parts are extremely kind of clumsy and awkward to, to, to sort of utilize. Now you can also take this adapter, take this shotgun piece, and use this to clip around where, oh, and then I, I didn't mention this. This piece flips up as well. Uh, it doesn't really stay. It's Once again, it's kind of a loose joint. But uh, then you can have this sort of in this position. And then there's a small hole in the back of his butt, basically, that you can insert that into to store the gun. It is a little unsightly, though, because it's just obnoxiously long for that space. You know what I mean? But I do get the feeling that this can detach somehow. Like, you see the little wiggle? Wiggle there. And here, there's like a C-clip but I'm just not comfortable messing with it. And every time I try to put a little tension on it, it doesn't look like it wants to go to me, but I see pictures online of it kind of just on the back. And that also solves one of my other problems with this part being kind of obnoxious for posing. So that's cool. You get two of these and they're huge. Uh, they're decoed nicely, they're sculpted beautifully. Some tampo paint on there as well. The handles do move back and forth. This piece will come off uh, and then this piece rotates. I don't think that it necessarily should, and one of them moves a little bit looser than I think most people would, would like, but I'm not entirely sure on that. This is how they are, and I'll show you what they can do. He'll hold them just fine using the same tab in the palm method. So now you can use your adapter, clip it around your weaponry here, and plug that in to this hole. Fold up this, the handle there. And he can have that on his, you know, over his shoulder as well. Then you get two punching bag missile launchers. And you have the handle here for him to hold them. And then you have the chrome or uh, metallic red paint that looks beautiful. And they are detachable. At least one was detached slightly in the box. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but they do detach it seems he'll also hold those but i can't get his fingers through the loop like between you know this space so that he'd be holding that handle i, I can't get it through there so it, like it just doesn't I, i'm having a hard time getting it to fit without putting extreme pressure on it but you know you can kind of work it this way i don't even know if it's something he's supposed to hold but the slot is there for the tab so mm. then you can take your two c-clip adapters and Put them around your barrel here. Uh, maybe down here. We'll just do it down here for now. And then plug them into the side of his knees. He also comes with this whip thing that I forgot to film for whatever reason, and I've got it all boxed up ready to go back to Joe. So just know that it's painted well, it's sculpted well, and it has a posable kind of heavy duty wire that it's all attached to that all of the little mines can kind of spin on and creates it as a posable sort of accessory and to whatever the weight of it will support. And he'll hold that just fine using the same methods. He also comes with 13 of these little capsule things. I'll show you where they go. They're mainly for the gimmicks, which we're gonna move into next, but you have one for everyone, which is nice. So if you take them and you take this piece and you remove this piece, you can then insert that in and then this piece will light up, which we'll talk about here in a second, and you can have them sort of with an effect on them. You have 13 of them, so there's one for every spot. 
And that will move us into gimmicks. So, like I said, all of the little plastic bits, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 are interchangeable and then they all light up. In addition to that, the eyes light up as well. It does not come with batteries or if it does, uh, Joe didn't bring them. So I don't have the batteries to show you how they work, but they all light up. And at least as far as I know, they don't come with batteries, you know? And what else? So also these, if you take these and then you can take this off of there so it's not an L shape anymore and then you can have that look which is just sort of the spiky look. So that's another gimmick. And then lastly, this piece here will move out of the way. And once that's out of the way, you can move this piece down and then this piece will actually rotate forward and you can kind of get access to the driver up in there in the flyer, so to speak, um, which is cool, a uh, cool little gimmick. So let's talk about the figure, good grief. First of all, it has this metallic blue throughout. It's absolutely stunning, beautiful, gorgeous. Any other word that you can think of that's remotely close within that pocket, apply it to this, it's appropriate. And other than that though, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of details inside of the face. It does light up obviously, and then you have the silver neck. Now, you get a good bit down. You can swivel the head once he's looking down, and you get a little bit up, which I guess is appropriate because I don't think these guys look up at much but you don't get much of a swivel with it up, which is a bit of a bummer. And then you can get a little bit of articulation with this horn. In regards to the abdomen, oh boy. So you get, it's like a ball peg at the base. You get the swivel, no problems. You get side to side teapot, no problems. There is an ab crunch. I have seen pictures of it. However, I can't get it to go i've tried i can't i can't get it to go maybe i'm not doing something right maybe there's a button that you have to release it it's a bummer for me personally because i would like to see it but it sucks that i can't get it to go and it really sucks if i'm not missing something and you just have to use that much force okay these articulate on ball pegs and these lift up on double hinges so fair bit there and then this is on a ball peg as well down at the bottom um his butt flap is not on so let's plug that in so to speak and i think it goes like this i'm not entirely sure uh these spin out they hinge out and then this entire section will open up widely and then this is on a hinge with a ball peg at the end both of these so you get a ton of articulation out of them as well, and you can collapse them to be fairly tight as well. Once again, the blue looks great, the gray looks great. Moving on to the shoulders, you have a significant butterfly joint, which is nice, brings that kind of socket all the way out to there. And then you have the disc hinge shoulder, which basically act, acts as a ball hinge, getting the arm out to 90 degrees. The shoulder pads do articulate a bit. Let's see, this one's a bit more, right? Yeah, so this one a bit more than this one because this one can be used as a shield. And then you get the swivel 360. I don't know if that's working, yeah, that's working its way out. That's the problem there. You then get a bicep swivel that's ungodly tight and makes me very uncomfortable to maneuver. You get a double hinged elbow and a little bit of detailing down there where it hinges out. And then you get this flap that opens up and brings this secondary flap out. And then you can maneuver this uh, hand guard here a bit for the hand, which is on a ball peg. So you'll get, or actually that's a hinge connected to a ball peg. So you get a little bit more in out and then you get the up down on the ball peg. The fingers are all individually articulated. So you have it looks like ball pegs at the base knuckle, but they might be hinges. It's hard to tell. I think they're unpinned hinges. And then 
unpinned hinges for the secondary and tertiary knuckles as well on the fingers. So they're fully articulated and they're tolerated well, unlike some of the third party stuff that we see where they're not tolerated well. And then you have uh, a secondary hinge on the thumb which has a ball peg that connects to the base of the palm. So all that's good. All the detailing with the blue, the silver, and the gray, and the tampo paint, which is par for the course that we've seen so far on this thing, continues through and looks good. Same for the other side. Now, we have these two hip thrusters here. They hinge up, and you have some secondary articulation on the thruster itself. They'll also swivel. Same for the other side. You have a very interesting universal joint it's a double it's like there, this sits in a socket inside of this one using both you can get the leg all the way out to the side collapsing them they rotate down on where the universal plugs into the hip so then you can rotate them back up to get it nice and tight which is nice and you can get the leg all the way out in front of them so all of that works beautifully. In my opinion, it's probably the best working piece of engineering on this guy. You also get a thigh swivel built around the universal, so that's nice. This here is just to protect the paint. I'm leaving it on because it doesn't belong to me. All right, knees. They're double jointed. You get a little bit of extra love with these pistons in here, but I feel like people have been telling me about how great these things are engineered with little maneuvering things around them. I'm not that impressed with this, but it's, it's, I mean, it works well enough. Uh, we have a couple little gimmicky things down here. This will flap will come up to allow this, which is on another hinge to move about and a ball, ball joint secondary, so that's nice. And then on the back, this one will rotate up as well, and this one is individually articulated as well within. Deco-wise, we have all sorts of silvers and golds. A little sauce on that one. And the like. So all of that works fairly well. The plastic feels good, and there's die cast to boot. For the ankles, you get an ankle tilt up. This piece will also rotate out a bit. So I didn't mention that. And it has pistons inside, so that's nice. So you can get a good ankle tilt up. A good ankle tilt down, a rocker both in and out if you should ever need that, which you probably wouldn't. Everything is sculpted on the bottom of the feet. Same for the other side. And there he is from the back, uh, relatively clean. So we'll move on to size comparisons. Size comparison wise, I don't have a whole lot to offer. Uh, I'll show you what I have, but here's, you know, most people have a, a prime of some sort that watch my channel anyway. So there he is next to a masterpiece scaled prime. So maybe a head taller, half a head taller, maybe a full head if you count the horn. And here he is with this other kind of Gundam-esque thing that I have in my collection. So I, I don't know if that helps anybody out there or not, but there you go. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. My main negative here are tolerances. Some stuff is super tight. The things that stick out to mine are both the bicep swivels and a lot of the hinges at the thighs, knees, elbows, like unnaturally tight. Plus I can't get the ab crunch to work properly. A lot of issues in regard to tolerance. Add on top of that that some joints are a little loose. Some of the stuff on the accessories is a little loose. He doesn't quite hold the accessories quite properly all the time with them being a bit loose. The hand joints are a little loose sometimes. So there's some inconsistencies in regards to tolerance and they're not all perfect. In fact, far from it. The fact that there's no instructions is super frustrating. Now, maybe if you know your way around this hobby a bit better than I do, it doesn't bother you as much, and I get that, I understand it, but for somebody new coming in, taking a shot at it, very frustrating. And maybe the instructions came in a third box. This thing came in two boxes. Maybe the instructions were in a third box and Joe didn't bring them. The electronics are a cool feature. However, without them, the eyes look dead, and my issue with that is that we have seen companies paint the eyes and have them light up, so it is possible to get your cake and eat it too in that regard. And I'm not settling for less. My main issue with this is a, like a lack of elegance. It's kind of clumsy. And the fact that the joints are super tight in some places and loose in others doesn't help that obviously, but getting them to be posed and such, like I was having a hard time and I feel like the amount of torque that you can get with some of these long limbs makes me at the very least nervous, at the very best cautious, and certainly skeptical as to how it will hold up, not only over time, but just in the time that I have with it. At the price point and reputation, I expected a completely different experience 
and mainly that that difference comes down to the amount of smoothness that I expected. It's not a smooth figure. It's clumsy, which is surprising. I feel like it's priced like a Flames Toys figure, but it feels like a 3A figure. In fact, 3A might feel a bit better. Now I'll move on to my positives. Sculpt is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Paint is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Plenty of accessories to boot. The gimmicks are cool. The articulation is really nice with the exception of that ab crunch because of the circumstances. The materials are fantastic. The plastics feel great. There's plenty of die cast throughout. It has nice weight and heft to it. It feels good. It has a good feel to it. So if you're in love with this character or this line or whatever, I can recommend it. However, if you're thinking about getting into this stuff, I would say that I'm not impressed. It's good, but with the amount of hype surrounding it, I feel like from the vocal fan base, I was expecting to have my mind blown. And it's not, but it's still good. So if you're into it and you kind of know your way around it and you're familiar with the vibe of these figures, I think I can recommend this with great confidence. If you're not and you're expecting something perfect, it's not that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.